Today we're going to make a router table cabinet. Half mounted in my table saw, the other half mobile. So similar to the last video, which was the table saw cabinet, which if you haven't seen, I do recommend you go back and watch that. A lot of the logic and reasoning behind this is very similar to that. That video can be found right here. I also had some pretty unique needs for the router table as well. On the Delta, I was able to mount the router table right in the extension wing. I was also able to use the table saw fence to support my router fence, and that was the same idea and first plan I had for this as well, but I quickly ran into obstacles there. First was because the extension wing was 36 inches on the saw stop versus 30 on the Delta. I was quickly running out of room, which I already didn't have a lot of, on the one side by my lumber storage. So then I decided to move it to the left side of the saw, which would allow me to stand out more in the open and not have to step over dust collection hoses or power cables as much. So because I can't just cut or drill into cast iron very easily, I decided to order the cast iron saw stop router table top to just drop it right in and I should be good to go. Right? Nope. Nope. Well, the initial images that I looked at were a contractor saw and turns out an industrial saw. Care to guess what's not sticking out the left side of that saw? A motor. Care to guess where the motor sticks out on the PCS? Now, I could get the top in there, which obviously is already another cast iron top in there, so that wasn't really that hard of a thing to figure out. But when I went to actually mount the router and the router lift, it was in the exact same place that the motor was sticking out from the saw. So after a week of being frustrated with this and trying to find a better solution, I decided to attach it to the left of the cast iron wing that's already there. So it would stick out an additional 16 inches. This wasn't that big of a deal. I could still slide the saw over a little bit and still have enough room to get by when the car is pulled in there. But the downside is because the saw is not made with this setup in mind, there is no additional side supports. So when building this cabinet, I needed to make sure that it was fully supporting that tabletop at all times. This now opened up a whole other can of worms of problems. Do I mount the tabletop to the saw itself or the mobile base so it can move around easily? If I mount it to the mobile base, support's easy, but how do I line it with the rest of the cast iron tabletop to make sure it's a smooth surface? If I mount it to the surface directly, how do I support it from underneath while still making sure that base is mobile? How would I move the mobile base away from the rest of the saw without having to disconnect the power every single time? Or the dust collection hose? How would I move it without having the actual router itself that's hanging there not get in the way? And with this new cabinet now in the way, if I needed to access the motor for the table saw, how would I get to that? All of these different questions added a lot of obstacles and frustrations and honestly made me delay this project a few different times trying to find the perfect solution. As we go along, I'll make sure to answer all those questions and the reasoning why behind each one of those. If you're new to the channel, please consider liking, subscribing, and hitting that bell as it really helps the channel out. Let's start off by getting the router and the tabletop mounted itself. I decided to attach the router table to the saw itself. This would guarantee perfect alignment for the tops and I wouldn't have to worry about it at all. This just went on with four bolts and didn't take too long to get perfect. The other reason that I went this route is it allows me to leave the router attached to the saw at all times, which means I wouldn't have to disconnect the power each time I moved this and I could run the cores together and have one disconnect by the wall for everything.
When ripping this sheet down, I realized the plywood was bowed pretty bad from just sitting out here for almost two years and eight season changes. So lesson learned there. During assembly, I will just have to use a little more force and throw a few extra braces to help square it up. You may have noticed this odd shape in the back of the cabinet. Well, the top part is cut out to allow it to slide past the router and dust collection box. And the lower part is cut out because of how close the table saw motor cover was to the back of this. I needed more space for the four inch hose. Now it's time for assembly. I had to make the cabinet as deep as I did for a couple of reasons, but the main one was how I wanted to store my router bits. This became another challenge that I had to figure out, and I'll get more into that later on. Next we will make the boxes for the casters, which is the exact same way I did it in the last video. These support the entire weight of the cabinet, so make sure these are very strong and there's plenty of space for the casters to fully spin. Then we will put it onto the ground and we can wheel it under the router top to check for fit. The drawers were all three very unique. The middle one was just normal. The top, I had to cut out the back part of the center for the dust collection hose to come back through. And the bottom one had this weird shape to accommodate for the casters being recessed. Once these were made, I could mount the drawer slides and get them in place. Next, it was time to use up the last of the edge painting that I still had lying around. Throw some spackle on there, one last final sanding, and then we'll get some paint.
Now we just need to get the dust port attached to the dust box itself. And then we're gonna use the same leveling feet from the last project, only this time we're gonna attach them to the bottom of the router box, which will then support the actual tabletop itself. I was only able to use three of these because the last one would have been in the way of the actual table saw motor cover opening up. And as you can see, it just barely clears everything. These serve the same dual purpose as before. They support the top above and they keep the cabinet in position and don't move when in use. As I tried to figure out the door situation for the last compartment, I wanted to add a vent to help with the airflow inside the router box. I 3D printed this vent that I can open and close to adjust the amount of air that can pass through here, which will help with dust collection even more. This is just held in place with CA glue in a couple spots and then caulking around the rest to seal it in. Next was router bit storage. Previously, I had them mounted on magnet strips and I loved that. However, this cabinet wasn't deep enough for that. So I needed to find a new way to replicate a similar storage solution. As you know, I hate pegboard and this area is no different for that. I see a lot of people with solutions where they have pegboard in the bottom or some kind of way to hold the actual bits by the shafts themselves. And I'm just not a big fan of that. One, it's harder to see what each bit does as you don't have a good profile view of it. And two, when you want to grab a bit, you're grabbing it right by the blade and pulling up. So because the magnet bars that I had were 18 inches long and this cabinet is only 18 inches deep, I wouldn't be able to use that as is. However, I found out that I was able to cut off the ends where the mounting holes are, make my own mounting bracket, and then we were back in business. I was even able to take off the labels from the original case that they came in and stick them right to these magnets so I can easily see what each bit is and it works amazing. Finally, we will attach the power to the switch, run the cable back to the outlet, and this project is done. Overall, I'm very happy how it turned out. I think you usually get a sense of pride when you run into this many obstacles and find a way to keep overcoming them and still end up with the vision you had at the very beginning once all said and done. Next will be to design and build a router fence for the router table itself. I know I could go up and buy one, but that's not near as fun. I'd much rather design and over-engineer my own to work with the rest of the setup here. I'm also starting to mess around with 3D printing the actual inserts for the router lift itself. So far, the ones that I've made and designed are a massive difference when it comes to airflow for dust collection. So once I get them fine-tuned and all the different sizes for bits, I'll make them available for anyone to download if they want to. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below if this project gave you any ideas for future projects of yourself. Please be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell if you feel that like I earned it. If you'd like to help support the channel, there'll be a link to my Patreon at the end of the video. If you're already contributing, thank you very, very much. And a call out to the Gold Members. As always, thank you. To everyone else, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.